another important element of editing is being able to add titles and graphics to your program. Final Cut has a great collection of pre-made templates that you can use and also a really versatile collection of tools that enable you to choose things like fonts and colors and size and placement on the screen. Um, so uh, in order to access the different uh, graphics tools that are available, I'm going to look on the screen here and in the far upper left corner of the screen, near where we went in an earlier segment to find the sound, we have this little button right here that has a square with a T in it and hiding behind that is another little box that has, I think, a two showing there. Uh, that menu actually takes you to the titles and generators sidebar. So notice when I click on that, it opens up another menu over here on the side. Um, if we ever want to get back, by the way, to um, our uh, projects and libraries and events, that's this, this button on, on the corner there. Okay, so if we click on this, it gives us two options, titles and generators. Let me just mention generators real quickly first. Generators are actually um, things that allow you to create like solid colors or textured backgrounds, those, those sorts of things that can be used to create a background behind a title uh, or you know, surrounding a video effect or something like that. So for example, if I click on the button here that says solids, it just shows me a collection of, of solid colors here. Uh, many of these can be adjusted, but they have a, a, a palette of colors. If you go to textures, you can see that they have textures like fabric or something called a gradient, which is the blend from one color to another color, something you call grunge and industrial, and several more different uh, categories like that. Again, these can be used uh, in a variety of ways, but often they're used serving as a background for a title for a show, something like that. So let's say that I want to use one of these that says wood. I can just click and drag this onto the timeline, and I'll just show you first of all uh, how you can drag it onto the timeline as if it were a clip. And it puts down a, a chunk of this that you can then trim to adjust the length of. So it can be, you know, five seconds or 10 seconds, whatever length you want it to be. There's really no, uh, no limit to the duration of one of these generators. Um, uh, like there is when you're trimming a video clip. Okay, now one of the things that is important to remember about all of these is that this is not the only option. Even though this says wood, if I open up my inspector and then go um, to the generators tab up here, you'll notice that it gives me options for what type of wood, and there's a whole bunch of different uh, types there. So there are darker woods and lighter woods and you know woods with a bigger grain pattern. So there's a whole bunch of different options. So don't forget that the option that shows isn't the only one available. You can also do things like tint the color if you want to. Um, so like right now, this is just a, a kind of a natural bamboo color, but you can turn up this tint value and add some color to that. And then if you want to change the color, you can click on that and bring up the little color wheel and choose the, the color that you'd like it to be tinted to. So turn down that tint. So you can adjust the length of it, and then you can also choose from a wide variety of different options that are available for that. Um, there are also things called elements, and elements uh, can be things like uh, counting numbers. So you can see you can set it to count up or count down. You can have time code. So you can make it look like you have you know, the camera's time code running. There are a variety of different shapes. And then they also have something called placeholders that you can put onto your timeline to remind you that you need to go pick up that shot and then use it to fill that space that you've occupied with the placeholder in the meantime. They also have backgrounds, same idea. Many of these are animated, so instead of just being a solid color or a texture, you actually have like blobs or clouds, curtains, bubbles. So there's a whole variety of these sorts of things as well. And just like with the wood, if I drop the blobs onto my timeline here, I want to go up to my inspector window because I can pick the colors. So if you don't like these warm yellows and pinks, you can also go in and change this to you know, cooler blues and greens or something like that to make the background look however you want it to look. So almost always they have options available for you. All right. so. So those are generators, really. They're just sort of you know, solid colors or animated elements that let you change um, uh, or create some sort of solid background that you can use behind something like a, a title. 
Okay, so talking about titles, I'm going to close up the Generators tab here and go into the one that says Titles. Now again, as always, they have a bunch of different subcategories there, and these are based on the way that people tend to use graphics in video productions. For example, they have something called Lower Thirds. Lower Thirds are often used to identify a person speaking. So for example, if I move my playhead over so that we see Emily there, a lower third would be something like this, where we want to superimpose her name across the bottom of the screen so that we can identify who she is and what her title is or contact information for her. So there's a lot of these lower thirds from really basic ones like that, which are just two lines of text, to some that are animated where the text actually will pop onto the screen. They have a variety of different color combinations, some kind of themes like this one that's notebook paper. They have animated ones that slide onto the screen. So there's a huge variety of these, but they all work pretty much the same way. Now, in, in this case, I think their presumption is that you're going to superimpose this title over video. We want to see Emily, and then in front of Emily, we want to see the bar that has her name there. So we could pick one of these that we like the looks of. So let's say that I want to use um, this one, this one called Gradient Center. I can just grab this and I want to drag it down to the timeline and you want to position it like you did our cutaway shots in the earlier segment. I want to position it above the clip that I want it to be superimposed over and drop it there. Once again, you can adjust the length of the clip by dragging the ends of it out like that, just as if it were you were trimming a video clip. And you can adjust its position to make it start wherever you want in relation to the clip. You can make it start at the beginning or at the end or in the middle. Okay, now we've got our clip applied, and you can see how because the, uh, the title is above the video clip here, that it's superimposing the title over the video like that. Okay, now we probably want to go in and edit this to actually put Emily's name and her title in there. So to do that, you can do it a couple of different ways. You can edit the text right on the screen here, or you can use the inspector to change it. So if I select her name here, and then go up to the tabs at the top, there are two of these tabs that will actually have an effect on the way this graphic looks. The one with the big T on it, as you might expect, and then this one that shows all the little lines there. If I click on one or the other of those, it'll bring up uh, different aspects of changing the title. The one with the T on it are uh, attributes which are specific to this graphic that you've chosen. So this particular lower third bar has these options available, and we'll go over a few of these here. Um, for example, the option here that says build in and build out lets you determine whether you want this graphic to fade onto the screen or have some other kind of animation as it appears and then have some other kind of animation as it goes out. So the build in is the graphic will fade in Photos, uh, as it comes onto the screen. Or you can also get another shot, a different angle of the same interview. And then notice that it fades out at the end. So that's what build in and build out are, are for. You can uncheck those if you'd rather not have it do that. And then they have, for this particular graphic, line one font and line one size and line one color. So those are all the attributes of the bigger line there that has Emily's name on it. Now if I want to edit the name, I can just click right on it. If I double click, I can select all or some of the text by dragging over it, triple clicking to select the whole thing. And then I can go ahead and type in the text that I want to be there. And then the same thing for the text below that. There are two separate pieces of text, so if I want to change description, and by the way, please don't leave it saying description. This is designed to hold text like her name or her title. So I can double click on that to highlight it, and then type in her title or who she works for or her email address, something like that. Okay. So that's the um, editing the text itself. Now say that you want to change the font or the color of this. I can double click on that. And then I can come up to the controls here where it says line one font. And I can choose from the pop-up menu there a different font and then some variation of that font. So I can choose from any of the different fonts that are listed here. Some are more readable than others. So always keep in mind that uh, that it's important that the viewer be able to look at the text and read it easily. Some fonts which are really fancy like that one might be cool, but they're a little hard to read. So I'm going to choose a more bold font. Okay. And then I can also choose, sometimes there will be options like oblique, which is italic, or 
or just bold. I can adjust the size here, and I can adjust the color. So right now the color is black, but I want to change that. I can just click right on that little black square. And the color wheel initially comes up black here because the, the brightness adjustment here is all the way to the right. But if I slide this to the left, it'll make us be able to see the colors. And then I can choose whatever color I want. Again, you just want something that contrasts well with what's in the background. In this case, we have that white bar in the background, so it makes almost any color work. But if we didn't have that, we wouldn't want to choose a color that's similar to the color of her shirt, for example, because it might sort of disappear. So something a little darker to go with the white bar might work better. And then we could do the same thing for her name if we want. So we have line two font and size and color. So we can choose a different font for that. We can make it a little bigger if we want. And then we, we can adjust the color same way. Okay. And then below that, bar width is how wide that bar is. So again, if your text is a little bit bigger, then uh, you can adjust the bar to fit the size of the text that you've placed in there. Don't want to go too crazy, though, because remember, the purpose of a lower third is to not completely cover the person that's uh, talking on the screen there. Okay, so now as we play through this, you'll notice it'll fade onto the screen and then fade off at the end. Photos, uh, or you can also get another shot, a different angle of the same interview. Ask okay, so that's some of the basics of being able to create a simple lower third. And that's using the attributes tab here, which is specific to that, that particular effect that we've chosen. You also have more generic controls available uh, under the tab here that has the little lines. And this gives us option to change any font, any color, but also to add a whole variety of other options, like adding a drop shadow, adding a glow effect, adding an outline. So let me give you some examples of doing that. Now, we placed this blob effect here earlier, so I could use that as from the generators collection. I could use that as a background for something like a title. So if I wanted this to appear at the beginning of my video, for example, I could take this blob I've created, I could move it over here to the beginning of the timeline, maybe shorten it up a little bit, because we don't want it to be quite as long as it is now. And then I can add a title over the top of that. So if I go up to my controls here, right now I'm in lower thirds, but I could go to elements or uh, build in, build out, any of these have kind of nice generic graphics. I could choose a simple little uh, title like this, which is just non-moving text, or they have a huge variety of animated elements. For example, this one called Boogie Lights will flash onto the screen like that, and then the title uh, is left over and disappears at the end like that. Um, they have some that have a variety of different pieces of text, so, so several that fly onto the screen or fly on and off. So say that you like that effect. I can just drag that, place it right above the blobs video that I created. I can adjust its length so it will match the length of the blobs. And again, this particular one will come zooming in from the sides like that and sort of cross over each other subtly like that. OK, so now if I wanted to change the way this looks, I have two separate lines of text. I can just double click right on those to highlight them. And then you'll notice I can also edit my text up in this little window up here. But if not, then I can come to this section and choose the font, just as we did before. I can choose the size. I may be able to choose some options like bold and italic, depending on the font you choose. I also can adjust things like the alignment. So if you have multiple lines of text, you can make them uh, square to one another. So I'll type another line of text below that. Let me move this one out of the way for the moment. Um, so if you've got multiple lines of text like we have here, I can move those lines of text closer to one another with the line spacing tool. Oh, sorry, wrong line there. OK. With the line spacing tool, I can move them closer together or further apart. I can adjust the spacing between letters. So if I highlight the letters and then use this function called tracking, I can spread the letters out like that. So there's many ways that you can affect the way that the, the title looks. Down below, you also have things like 
um, outline and glow. So the face of the text is the color of the letter. So if you're not satisfied with that white color, I can click on the button here that says show, which will reveal all the options for the face color. And I can fill it with a solid color by clicking on a little color sample and then choosing the color that I want. I might decide to go dark against that relatively light background, for example. You can also fill with something called a gradient. A gradient lets you choose more than one color because you're actually blending together two or more colors. So to adjust the gradient, I can click on the word gradient here, open up the controls, and it shows me I have two colors here, a light blue and a dark blue. I can adjust the position of those colors or I can change the colors. So if I want to have a yellow to blue blend instead, I can click on this little white tab over here and then go in and to my color inspector and choose the color that I want to go there. So if I want a red to, uh, to yellow blend, I can now click on the blue side, click on my color selector, and then go choose the red that I want to be in there. Let me close that up. Uh, choose my color selector, choose the color that I want, and now I get a, a much more fiery kind of blend from yellow to red like that. So that's the face tab. I can show the controls or I can hide the controls. Same thing with uh, uh, drop shadow. This text already has a drop shadow applied. I can tell that by looking at the uh, little checkbox here. I can turn off the drop shadow that's currently on the letters, or I can go in and adjust it. So if I click on the show button here, and scroll down a little bit, you can see that I can also fill that with color or gradient. I can adjust the color of that shadow in the same way we've done before. But more importantly for this, I can adjust the distance of that shadow, how far away it is from the letter that it's attached to. I can adjust its angle by rotating the little uh, control here. And I can adjust things like blur. I can make the shadow softer by increasing the amount of blur like that. And then you also have the option to add an outline or a glow. These are somewhat similar in the way that they look. The outline just allows you to add a border that surrounds the, uh, the outside of the letter. If I go to the Show button to look at my options there, I can pick the color. So I want to choose a darker color for that. And then I also can adjust things like the opacity, how solid it is or how transparent it is, the width, and the blur. So I can blur that slightly as well so it's not quite as sharply defined. So you notice how much more visible the text is when you add an outline and when you add a shadow than it is without those elements. So it's always important to think about how you're going to use this text. Are you going to use it over a video background, which is very busy and has a lot going on, or are you going to use it over something like a generator solid color background, in which case um, you might be able to get away without having as much of the, the outline and shadow. Uh, I can also add a glow, which is sort of like a lighter colored outline. I'm going to increase the radius of that so you can kind of see that big glowing edge around the text like that. So you can stack up as many of these as you might want for your title. Now one of the other things that Final Cut has that's really nice is they have uh, pre-made elements. So elements are items where they've already created these, these fairly elaborate graphics for you. And then they also have these that say uh, 3D cinematic. Again, these are already animated elements, like these titles over the globe or this opening title, where they've already done some sort of fancy movement for you. And all you have to do is provide the text. So if you find one of these that you like, you can just drop it on your timeline. I'll put this in in place of the, the title that I did before. I can just drop it in, force it in at the beginning of my timeline like that, and then I can just go in and edit the text that's there. So I can double click on that, type in whatever I want it to say instead. So you don't have to do all of that extra work to create the title from scratch. You can let uh, the nice people at, um, at Apple do some of the work for you instead. Okay, so there you have a pre-made and always go look at it in the, the, um, uh, the inspector to find out what different options you have. There are many different ways that that graphic can come onto the screen besides the first one that you saw there. 
just so your graphic looks a little different from others and you can adjust things like the background color. So if you're afraid that someone else might be using the same graphic, you can go in and modify it to look the way that you want it to look with different fonts, different colors, all of that sort of thing. Okay. Um, one other relatively new function that they've added to Final Cut is the ability to add 3D graphics. Um, so if I click on it, the options up here that say 3D, for example, they have basic 3D looking graphics. These just have depth that the letters that we looked at before don't have. So if you see um, one of these moving, for example, you can see the edges of the text as they fly onto the screen. And these are intended to be superimposed over video. So I could put this, for example, over my clip of Emily, or I could put it over a generator. And then all I need to do is go in and change the text. So once I get it in there, I can then just double click on the text. And now I have a nice, fairly elaborate looking opening title. Now in addition to that, I can go in and change the font, change the color, and then you have a whole variety of additional 3D options. So if I go to uh, the T button up here, I can change the, the way that this tumbles in. And I can do things like change how fast it comes in and how it speeds up and slows down. But if I go to the generic controls for my text, I can also go down to th change things like the font, just as we did before, so nothing different there. But one of the things that's a little different about, um, about the 3D text is that you have controls down at the bottom down here that let you adjust things like the, the depth of the letters. Since they are 3D, you see them fly onto the screen here. Let me back this up a little bit so you can see them flying onto the screen. Um, so you can choose the depth of the text, make it stick out more. You can choose what direction um, it, um, it, it's extended, the weight of it. You can, add, you can adjust things like the, the front edge and the, the inside edge. And you can even control the material. So right now it's just kind of a generic white, but if I click on this little material button down at the bottom down here, I can choose from a whole variety of different textures that I can apply to the letter instead of just a, a shiny white texture. It can be uh, like concrete or different types of fabric or metals or woods or stone. So if I click wood, for example, which is a, a light color of wood here, you can make it apply a wood finish to that text instead. Okay, let me go back to here. I'm gonna choose a movement option, and then you can see the effect as it comes onto the screen. A different angle of the same interview. Ask the and you can also reposition this. So the little plus button in the center there is my handle to be able to move the text. So if I don't want it to come up right over her face as it is doing at the moment, I can make it fly Shot. in a different angle to of the, the bottom same interview. Like so. Ask the same question over again. So that's a quick look through some of the text tools that are available. Remember to get to them, you want to click on the little T button up there, choose whether you want a title or a generator, and then from the different subcategories, you can grab a title and drag it directly onto the timeline, positioning it above the video clip that you want to see it over. And then you can select that and go in and make adjustments to it in your inspector window. So I hope this has been a useful uh, look at some of the text tools that are available in Final Cut Pro 10.